Hello and welcome to Chris Alicia's introductory video. I am so excited to be hosting this video as she is uh, part of our core team here at Awake TV Network. She's also a dear soul sister of mine and did my introductory video as well. So how are you, Chris? So excited to be doing this for you. Hi, Amanda. Thank you so much for doing this with me. It's going to be a blast. Yes. <laughs> yes, I would definitely say so. And we've been on a wild ride in terms of putting this network together. Um, it's been intense and wonderful. And I want to start off by saying I cannot thank you enough for all your support on all fronts, uh, putting this together. It's been this, all of us shepherding this energy of the network. I, I like to say it has its own energy, its own destiny. And we've been working together as a fabulous team to really move it forward. And here we are, very close to launch day. So it has been amazing. Oh my goodness. I can't it. So let's start off. I want you to tell you tell your story. Uh, you know, kind of how you got into it. first of all, what your hit your uh, employment history is as a as a veteran of this country, which is very important. We're almost upon Veterans Day here. Um, I want you to talk about that for a moment and how you've always been connected spiritually. And then your journey to this moment. Um, and then from there, talk about your show and what you'll be doing on the network and your date and time. Go. No pressure. No pressure. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I grew up uh, in Maryland and I'd always been, I always like to say my parents exposed me to religion, but never really forced me to go into a box. So from a very young age, I learned that I could kind of pick and choose what felt right to me. None of them felt correct when I would go to church, when I would, um, I had some friends that were Catholic and I would go to their churches and it just felt like it didn't fit. So from a very young age, I started creating my own spirituality and I love telling people that I was spiritual and not religious. That was my big um, catchphrase. So I've looked into uh, paganism and Wiccan and all these other wonderful um, genres to kind of find my own spirit. But it always took a back seat for me. I was very athletic. Um, I was very aggressive. It's probably, <laughs> it's probably You're an thing. Aries female, honey. It's us Aries females, especially when we're young. Yes. It's, it's probably safe. The it's a safe word. Aggressive is a very nice way of saying it. <clears throat> so I joined the military. Um, I was very much encouraged by my dad, who is uh, one of my best friends, just an absolutely amazing, amazing soul. Uh, when I, I was just kind of lost after high school, I was not playing sports anymore. I was just waiting tables. And he told me, he's like, you've always wanted to join the military. It's time. Just go. Because I'd always felt called to serve something bigger uh, to the point where I would tell people when I was a kid, I'm going to save the world. Like this is going to be my thing. So I joined the military. I joined the air force um, and ended up only doing four years, but it was an incredible experience. Because I learned for the first time by joining the military that I was smart. I learned for the first time that I was good at things. Um, I was always a mediocre student, uh, never really applied myself. But the military showed me that I was a natural leader. And mm. that I could do things that I had never thought to even try before. Mm. So it really pushed me out of my comfort zone. Um, but spirituality very much took a back seat in that world. I was working with all men all the time. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're very ingrained in it. You know, I've, um, I've worked overseas a couple of times. I've been to Afghanistan. So that is your focus. You become very myopic. Um, and the spiritual side just didn't really come in. When I got out, I was still working for the, for DOD as a civilian. And I started getting a lot of pain. I started, I had a bad relationship. I was financially uh, having issues. I literally just crashed. Everything in my world decided to go wrong at the same time. Uh, so I told my dad about it, and he told me to check out Edgar Casey's Association in Virginia Beach, so the ARE. Uh, and he's like, look, I'll pay for you to go on a retreat. Just go away. <laughs> You're mm -hmm. breaking down at work. Just go away. Um, see if this fits, because I've never tried meditation. I've never tried any of that. And I spent a full 48 hours crying. And it was cleansing in a way that I absolutely cannot describe to people who haven't experienced it. Um, 
but it really was like being reborn. And I realized there's this whole side to me that I had never explored. It had always been there on the periphery, you know, I'd make jokes about being spiritual. Uh, but this showed me the absolute power, power behind that. Hmm. So I became a voracious study of um, meditation, um, energy work, dream work, astrology, just anything I could really get my hands on. But it was never one field. And I never felt called to do what most of the people in my area was doing, which was healing. You know, there's a lot of Reiki, there's a lot of medita- or, uh, there's a lot of meditation coaches, massage, energy healers. And I never felt called to do those. Mm-hmm. So up until about a year ago, I, I still called myself very much a student. Um, I'm still a student of spirituality. And I hope to always be a student in some respect. Uh, but then I saw this wonderful interview with you. <laughs> I, I can't even for life me remember who you were being interviewed by, but you mentioned alchemizing the spirit. I was like, you know what, that, that's exactly what I need to do. I need to take this person who's always used spirituality on the periphery mm-hmm. and merge it with this military woman that I had become. And you know, this, I'm very proud of that part of me. Mm-hmm. And I wanted the spirituality to be the same hardcore ingratiated ingrained part of who I was. So I did a free session with you. Um, and just some of the things that you told me, one was so profound for me was that I was exactly who I was supposed to be. And I took that information and I took my background of this left brain person and I started going through my birth charts. I went through, um, Chinese astrology, numerology, all these elements that people say make up your personality. And I actually analyzed them and I looked for patterns and this word kept coming to me when I was doing it. And the word was intentionality. I'm like, Mm -hmm. that's not a word. That's not a word. Leave me alone. Whoever was saying this word to me, it's not a word. But I, I looked at myself on paper and I was able to see that on paper, the woman who I become, who is insecure and who had this very militant side um, who thought that something was wrong because I didn't want to be a healer. I realized by looking at myself on paper that I was exactly who I was meant to be. And I could see the planets and the way they lined up and the numbers and the names that I had chosen all fit this person. Um, So it was such a profound moment for me to realize that I was who I was supposed to be. And there was absolutely nothing wrong with me. So that is where that word intentionality came from. The more I heard it, the more it resonated with me that intentionality meant that divine blueprint. It meant that everything in my world, everything in our world was divinely created. And that if we sat down and looked at it from a left brain side, you could start to see those patterns and understand that language, which is very much what I did with my own profile. So, so what is the definition of an intentionality? How did that, why was that word coming to you? What does it mean? I say it's very much a combination of. Uh, It's so intention is the action, right? We intend to do something. Um, Intentionally is the spirit behind which we do something. Intentionality means the divine purpose behind doing something, the divine makeup, the essence that makes it up is perfection. Uh, So intentionality is the design of the universe. The universe was divinely created to a blueprint that is discoverable, that we can learn and understand and resonate with. We are divinely created. They talk about... um, in the womb, the egg, when it, in a woman's womb, when it first creates is the sphere. It's the, the female symbol, the divine feminine. As it splits, it goes through sacred geometric patterns until it creates the flower of life, which is a symbol that has been all over the world. They found it in, uh, in China. It's in like the forbidden city in China. They found them in the pyramids on some of the obelisks outside of the pyramids. It's, it's been everywhere. It's a divinely sacred symbol and it's inside of a woman's womb when she's creating life. We are divine creatures. And every time I do this, every time I study um, intentionality, I see more patterns and I've traveled the world. So I love seeing the ancient civilizations and the texts and 
the symbols that they've used coming together and how they merge and they just, there's so much meaning to the world now that I've really opened my eyes to what I call intentionality. Beautiful. That's really beautiful. So you came to a space of forming the term intentionality in the recognition of yourself, the discovering the divine being you are, your own soul's blueprint, and the process of awakening. So yeah. you're talking about right now your awakening process. I can remember that conversation very clearly. I can remember you saying things like, I've been going to spiritual classes for like 10 years and people keep telling me that, you know, I need to uh, heal my inner child and I need to do this and I need to do that. And, and I don't feel like I'm quite there. I'm not, I don't. And, and all I kept seeing from your soul's vibration, your higher self was that you are divinely perfect mm -hmm. as you are. And this is who you're supposed to be. And as soon as you recognize that, nothing is going to stop you in your power. Nothing is going to slow you down because you are at such a high vibrational frequency. You are such a master energy and you're here to lead others in this awakening experience that you have to discover, you have to discover your own path. It is about, you know, this formation of who you are through self-discovery no one can tell you what you are i you know it came through the message came through that you're perfect as you are and from that moment as you said you you analyzed every step every piece to, to put the puzzle pieces together to discover the master energy that you are so so uh, you came up with the term intentionality through this process this divine process of self-discovery and so Continue from there about about your journey to this moment, to this show, to Awake TV Network and your call. Mm -hmm. So since that moment, and I've had many awakening moments, but this one was the one that opened up my connection to spirit in a way that I had not felt before. All of a sudden I started dreaming uh, in symbols. I would dream in numbers. And I was not a good math student. I was not a good science student. This was not my field of study. So when I'm hearing information about the quantum field and how to create um, a quantum grid around the planet using intention and the, the collective consciousness and how to activate sacred sites using um, symbology and uh, geometry, I had to start writing it down. I was like, this information is so beyond me. I have no idea where it's coming from. So I did, I have a whiteboard room, literally, this is my craft room, uh, but I have a room that is just whiteboards and I write the numbers and the symbols that I get in there. And I started to see patterns. Uh, I found this wonderful mirror imagery in the basic base 10 number system that I'm gonna share on my show. I've found wonderful connections uh, between sacred geometry, numerology, and uh, archaeology, some of the sites that we've got around here. Uh, the planetary orbits and how we stay in our orbitary system. Um, the effect of music on not only water, but the body, and how we can learn to re-resonate with that divine pattern to heal ourselves, to live forever. All this stuff is completely possible. And the language, the language is out there. The universe is speaking to us in every respect. Um, and I'm finally listening. And it's been a whirlwind of a year. Um, so this show is, so. <laughs> it's, it's been an intense year. So this show is about sharing that information that I'm getting with the collective and learning with each other. So mm -hmm. I want to create a conversation. I want to start a movement of bridging um, science and spirituality of using science to prove spirituality and getting mm -hmm. those left brain people who might have felt left out on the spiritual train to realize that they really do have a purpose in all of this. Um, and I would love help learning the language of the universe. I think that is just a really, really cool divine mission. Mm, beautiful. So let's summarize then what your 12 episodes are going to be about. Are you going to have interviewees on? Are you going to be building on concepts? What is your, what will people expect this season 
our first season of Awake TV Network uh, from Chris Alicia. Wow, it's, it's, it's a lot. Uh, so most of the shows are not going to be interviews, mostly because there's so much information that I want to put out there. And I want to see the comments and I want people to interact with me during these shows. So the subjects that we'll cover, instead of just saying one day will be sacred geometry, one day will be mathematics, is to show the patterns that I've seen that cross all of those genres. So talking about the importance of the numbers 3, 7, and 12. Um, talking about the importance of the pyramids and how they line up to Orion and what that means for ancient ancestors, as well as what it meant for geometry and what it means for residents. Um, talking about music, how it affects water, um, how words affect water. So they're going to be grouped together in those types of themes. So how to heal the body. And at the end of every show, I wanted to do some spiritual experiment because that has been one of my favorite things about the learning uh, that I've done is experiments from like Dr. Emoto and uh, Nassim Harman, where you can see the effects of spirit on physical matter. So at the end of every show, there will be some experiment that you can go off and do on your own. And I want to hear your results. I want to see the pictures. I want to, <laughs> I want to create case studies on this to show how it works. That's fantastic. That's incredible. It that was the first time I've heard this. So I'm very excited. Everyone listening, I'm very excited about this. I will be watching your show for sure. I want to see these things. I want to see these experiments. Yes. And I do have some wonderful interviews lined up as well. Um, and they've got, mostly I'm looking for people that have that same background, that have this code breaker kind of feel to them. So we can come on and as I've talked to um, with a lot of the other teachers on Awake TV is to create this new word of spirit. You know, we're all getting our little pieces of the puzzle. So I mm -hmm. want to put these pieces together and see what the picture is. So I'm very, very excited about that. I know I get all, <laughs> I get all giddy. <laughs> well, it's, it's an incredible, you know, us doing our work together over so many months, mm -hmm. uh, me seeing and knowing who you are, and what you're bringing to our consciousness here during this time of awakening um, is it's about changing the planet. That's what we've been talking about since I first, we first connected because that's the level of consciousness you're at. It's this massive energy that is uh, here to, to do make big changes. So now you have all this energy and information coming through to share with us, to show us, to bridge science and spirituality to integrate the right left brain the masculine and the feminine you know it's all about this integration into the oneness into the unified field of consciousness so i want to thank you and honor you for your work it's it's one year you know i mean like when i met you had already been in, engaged for 10 years and in one year it's it's like 100 years uh you know have taken place in terms of your uh mastery um, so I, I'm very excited for the show. When is it, when is it going to air? So it is Intentionality and it's going to be called Intentionality, Remembering Your Divine Blueprint. It airs every Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time. And every week we'll have some learning, some interaction, and then the experiments at the end. Fantastic. Um, do we want to mention anything about your other show that will be coming? Yes, so uh, <laughs> at least one other show. Um, I'm working with uh, Dr. Effie Chow, who is uh, from Chow Chi Gong. She is a grandmaster Qi Gong expert uh, who literally brings the magic back into your life to, to heal chronic injuries that you didn't think you could ever get through. So she and I have spoken about um, her work with the veterans and my veteran background. I also work with vets with PTSD. Um, and TBI and the rest when they get out of the military. So we've talked about doing a documentary focused just on the veterans and how Qigong can help them with their chronic pain, um, sleep issues, et cetera. And now it's snowballed into she wants to do a total separate show just for veterans. <laughs> so, so stay tuned for that one. There's going to be a spiritual veterans show. Um, and only spirit knows what that is going to look like. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. 
Yes, and I, I think it's a, I think it's just wonderful. I mean, she, Dr. Chow adores you. You guys really connected in such a beautiful way when you went to Harvard with her uh, just a couple of weeks ago for that whole integrative medicine conference. Really, really beautiful. Qigong, Tai Chi, and uh, TCM, um, Traditional Chinese Medicine Integrative Healing Conference, which is fabulous. So she's a pioneer in integrative medicine. And uh, just brief background, Dr. Chow opened the first integrative medicine clinic in 1973 in San Francisco. So she's pretty, she's pretty powerful um, and not, not a young one, but it's <laughs> <laughs> more energy than we do, I swear. She, she exhausts me. I tell you, at Harvard, we were doing dinner and I kept pulling on her shoulder. I was like, I have to go to sleep. I'm so sorry, Effie. I'm so tired. <laughs> She's... She, uh, it was embarrassing for me that I had no energy to keep up with this woman. <laughs> <laughs> right? I know. She's amazing. So I'm excited for that show, and I'm excited to honor the veterans of this country. And it will expand. I feel that energy is for veterans all over the world and for people that have been a part of, uh, who are living in or been a part of war-torn war -torn areas of the world, um, as well as people who have experienced PTSD for any number of reasons. This is about bringing you back into center. This yeah. is about uh, uh, reorganizing your neuro patterns so that you can live a comfortable life without all the trauma in the physical body all the time. So it's exciting. It's an uh, exciting and another pioneering. This is where her energy is coming from right now. It's another pioneering <laughs> moment for her. And so um, that's, you know, that's where the drive is and the excitement behind all this is, is that's who she is and that's also who you are. So I'm excited for that show because she's already lining up all these people <laughs> she wants to know. I know. The show and that are, that are totally involved in the veteran community, et cetera, et cetera. So very excited for that. Is there anything else you want to share before we sign off on your introductory video? Uh, yeah, I just why, want to say, how oh, about I, this? Why did you join the awake movement? What drove you to do this endless of uh, dedicated, <laughs> inspired action for us here on the Awake TV team as one of our mainstays? What has two, driven two that? reasons? Uh, you you made me, um, <laughs> oh, and the second one. <laughs> All right, there we go. The second one, I kept getting this vision from spirit about um, sand in an hourglass. And it mm -hmm. was showing me the sand pouring down and sand doesn't fall directly down into a line, right? It forms down into these waves. Mm -hmm. And spirit told me that we ascend together. So mm -hmm. this is the collective, this is a consciousness, this is the right time for all of it. So whether it's in my background or even my comfort zone, it's important to do it. And uh, I want to be there to ascend with the group. I want to be there to help. Yeah, well, you are a rock star for our team, for the network, for the world. <laughs> and I can't, I can't thank you enough for uh, your mad organization, analytical skills in combination with uh, uh, all the spiritual stuff you're bringing to the network. So um, with that being said, why don't you say a quick goodbye and then... Guys, thank you so much for listening to this whole introduction. I hope we entertained you. Uh, <laughs> and please, please check us out. I would love to have you come onto my show, uh, share your thoughts, what you'd like to see as far as bridging science and spirituality. It's going to be an amazing trip, and I'm absolutely honored to be here. Thank you all so much.